and welcome to our covalent unit homework packet. We are looking at pages one and two today. So a lot of what we did today was to um, review what we did in unit three, ionic, and then to start comparing how covalent is going to be different this unit. So especially for those of you who struggled on the unit three test, let's look at formulas. Ionics, we said, are four-step formulas. Okay, Our four steps, we do symbols. So for silver, AG, and then chloride, we want to look at our polyatomic ion list. This list has chlorate on it and chlorite on it, but it does not have chloride, I-D-E. So that means that the symbol for chloride is just chlorine. It's just this one. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down as my symbol for chlorine. Oops, and I used parentheses because I was talking about polyatomic ions. Look at that. That's why we don't write in pen, people. So silver and chlorine, that's step one, symbols. Step two is charges. Silver is in the exception block. It's the one in 1B that makes a plus one charge. Chlorine is a nonmetal right here. Nonmetals need negatives, those ends. No, 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 no. Nonmetals need negatives. So it needs one more negative to be like, um, excuse me, like the noble gases. So I would say if I let it, it would get one more negative. And then I'm going to crisscross those charges. So my charge becomes one silver, and the charge of one becomes one chlorine. And then the final step is to reduce and erase. Ones are invisible in algebra and in subscripts. So I'd say just AgCl, one of each. Okay. Beryllium chlorite, same two steps, or excuse me, same four steps. Beryllium is Be. And then I need to be really, really careful. That's not chlorine. That's not the same symbol here. Chlorite, it's only one letter difference. It's such a pain. But chlorite is ClO2. So I'm going to use that as my symbol. I'm going to copy it exactly. ClO2 in parentheses. And it even tells me here that that makes a negative one charge. So step one, my symbols. Step two is charges. Beryllium, I have to check here. It's in the two always family, 2A. So this always makes a two charge. It's a messy metal that is going to lose both valence electrons, leaving it more positive. Okay. So symbols, charges, step three is to crisscross. We're not allowed inside the parentheses, so keep out. It's the no-fly zone. BE1, ClO2, 2. Then to reduce and erase, I can't reduce one half, but I can get rid of that one because it's redundant. So BE, ClO2, 2. Like that. This is an important skill that you're going to need for the rest of the year. So if you don't feel confident in this, please come see your teacher. We would love to help you learn that sooner rather than later. Ionic naming. The rules for ionic naming is you name the positive thing first, and then you name the negative thing. If it's in parentheses, we don't change the ending. We just copy it off the list. If it's not in parentheses, then we change the last three letters to ID. So this will become nitride, I-D-E. But we also have to, for ionic only, check for Roman numerals. Okay. Magnesium is Mg, and it's in the two always family, so it doesn't get a Roman numeral. If it always makes the same charge, we don't worry about that whole mess. Okay. So these guys don't get them either. I'm going to name the first thing magnesium. Okay. And then anytime I see something in parentheses, a polyatomic ion, I look at the polyatomic ion list. So what is it? SO4 is right there, sulfate. And I don't have enough chemistry knowledge yet, if I'm you, to change anything on here. So I'm going to copy that exactly. Sulfate. A, T, E. Done. That's it. Okay. Which of the following is not ionic? So this gets into some of the new stuff we started to look at today. Um, and I want to, to show you this. Okay. So what I did on this periodic table is I highlighted all of the metals, or I colored all of the metals in yellow, and all of the nonmetals in blue. We don't worry about metalloids anymore. Okay, we're not doing that anymore. And then I wrote this up there, I for ionic. Okay, so I put a big ionic right in the middle, and then I kind of colored a T. There's a T hiding in that capital I for transfer. An ionic bond will transfer electrons from a metal on that side to a nonmetal on that side. So this is a big symbol to memorize if you are having a hard time comparing and contrasting, which is a huge skill. That capital I ionics will capital T transfer 
from that side to that side. Covalence then, I do my C, both ends of that C point at the nonmetals. So covalent bonds are only between nonmetals, and we say sharing is caring. So we're going to say sharing is caring for this one. So that's how we can remember that ionic bonds transfer electrons and covalent bonds are going to share electrons. So when we're looking at questions like number 11, it says which of the following is not ionic? Okay, Ionics will have a metal in them and nonmetals. Covalents are only nonmetals. So we're saying which is not ionic, which does not or has no metal. Okay, So looking at choice A, we're going to take out the garbage here. Okay. Choice A has potassium, K, which is a metal. So that means this one is ionic. That's garbage. B, aluminum, is a metal. So that one's garbage. I can get rid of that. C, carbon, right here. That's a nonmetal. And oxygen is a nonmetal. I'm not going to choose that as my answer yet until I make sure this is garbage too. G, A, gallium, right there in the metals. Take that out as garbage. So this one is not going to be like the ones we learned about in Unit 3. We're going to learn more about that next class. But this one's different. So these three are going to be ionic. Regular old is what we learned the first time. This one's going to be different when we name it. Okay. Looking at this one, number 15, um, I just want to warn you, tri means 3, hexa or hex means 6. Okay. We haven't quite gotten to this yet, so maybe this question isn't so appropriate. Formula, just like it was up top, we're talking about four-step formulas, okay? So first step is symbols, iron, and oxide is just oxygen. Then we do charges. This name is telling me iron making a two-charge oxide. So I know that the charge of iron is two, which is good, because the periodic table couldn't tell me ion, iron's charge. It's not in an always family, and it's not in the exception block. That's why I told you the charge in the name. And then oxide is a nonmetal. Nonmetals need negatives. It needs two more. It has six. It needs two more to be like eight. So two more negatives. That's oxygen's charge. Step three is to crisscross. And then step four is to reduce. I would never pick answers where the numbers are the same because two halves is the same as one. So I'm going to change these both to ones, which are invisible. So it's, I don't have any threes in this problem. This one looks right. I don't have any threes in this problem. There's my answer. So take out the garbage and you'll find your answer. Let's look at page two. Okay. So again, here we're comparing um, ionic or covalent. And that big key is going to be finding metals. That's how you know which compound it is, which kind of bond, which set of rules to use. Okay. Um, so we're going to look through these, these ones here, and we're going to just check for metals. So nitrogen and oxygen, they're both nonmetals. Bromine is a nonmetal, and fluorine is a nonmetal. Nitrogen and iodine, all right, they're both nonmetals. Iodine and fluorine are both nonmetals. <laughs> Calcium, finally, there's a metal right there. So I'm going to say this one is a metal, which means this one is going to be ionic. Sulfur and oxygen are both nonmetals. So if they don't have any metal in it, it's covalent, okay? Because they're both on that side of the periodic table. Um, if we're going to come back and do one of these then, because holy cow, there weren't a lot of examples. Rubidium, right here, metal. So that means it's going to have to be ionic, because it's a metal bonded to nonmetal or nonmetals, phosphorus and oxygen. So these two I could name already. Y'all should be able to name those and write formulas for them already. Calcium chlorite and rubidium phosphite, because okay, that was unit three. These other ones we'll learn how to name next class. I want to point this out. Please use your notes for this. You don't have these memorized. We took this in class. If you are absent, please go to Canvas and click on unit four materials. Okay, the notes are up there. Um, we're asking you to say, is it ionic, covalent, or metallic? So there's two blanks here. Blank and blank will conduct electricity when they melt. Well, for sure, we know that metals conduct electricity. Okay. We learned in class that ionic things are electrolytes. So when you dissolve them in water, 
or when they're liquid, they can conduct electricity. So if you melt it down to liquid. Covalent compounds never conduct electricity. Crystals, okay, metals aren't crystals. Covalent, I mean, you're thinking more like chalky solids or gases. Ionic are crystals, like table salts. Low melting points. That means like would melt in room temperatures, like water or oxygen gas, <laughs> usually only nonmetals. So lowest melting point would be covalent. Dissolves easily in water. Metal doesn't dissolve in water. Um, covalent compounds don't tend to either. And again, that's, that's in your notes. Transfer. So look at that T right there. If you go like that, now it's an I for ionic. So ionic things will transfer electrons. Ah, that's so important. Okay, at the bottom, comparing and contrasting, just for our notes. Um, transfer electrons, that's ionic. T, right, because there's the I, R-A-N-S, -S. transfer. And then sharing is caring, C, shares. Okay, so we can get rid of this. Shares is on there twice, we can cross that out too. A bond between elements. These are both examples of bonds. So both of them will bond. Okay. Check your notes for some of these other ones. Electrolyte means can conduct electricity like sodium and chlorine and potassium. Those are all ionic things, salts, salty electrolytes. So ionics are electrolytes. Which means covalent would be our non-electrolytes. And I'm out of room. And then the last one I want to look at with you has a nonmetal. Well, ionics, remember capital I, points at both sides of the periodic table. Ionics have a metal and a nonmetal. And covalents point only at the nonmetals. They're nonmetals too, so we'd say here nonmetal. Okay, this one's only nonmetal. This one has a metal with it, but they both have nonmetals in them. All right. Next class, we're going to learn the naming rules for covalent compounds. So for today, it's going to be really important that you can kind of mentally separate when you're using the old Unit 3 ionic rules and when we're using the new Unit 4 ones. Good job, y'all.